you all have anything? We could talk about the guy farting in the cubicle across from Chris. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I get. We were texting for some reason, and I cannot like I can't remember why, but like Chris goes, "Dude, the like the guy beside me." I think he just farted. <laughs> I got that text from Chris, and I was like, "I mean, does it stink?" Well, how about you wait until it's recording? Oh, we're all recording. Oh. Yeah, I just, I record for a little bit. Just, like, make sure there's, like, if there's, like, something good that I want to keep in. So, I guess, I guess we'll do the intro. What's up? This is Better Than Static. I'm Tyler, and I have with me my buddy Lucas. Hey, hey. And my buddy Chris. (laughs) (laughs) Is that what it sounded like on the other side of the cubicle wall? No. It sounded like it was, like, being held in for a long time. And like he was just letting it squeak out a little bit. Gotcha. Like, like he couldn't handle the pressure anymore. I've been in that guy's position. <laughs> like the lucky lucky thing for me though is like that I, I I only share a cubicle wall with like one person and it's like one of my best friends. So like if I do fart, I'm like, hey, come smell this. <laughs> you would do that with anybody though. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> But, like, the the thing that does scare me, though, is, like, what if I do fart and it stinks really bad and, like, somebody comes to my cubicle, like, to ask me about something and then it's just, like, it's there and you can smell yeah. it and it's just rough. But I also agree. I've been in the situation where you have to hold it for a pretty good amount of time. Yeah. I mean, if, if that's just the case, I usually just get up and go to the restroom or... The break room, or <laughs> like a normal. Don't do it in the break room, though, because then somebody's like enjoying their coffee, and they're like, "Oh well, god!" Only, only if there's nobody in there. Like I'll just walk through and get some coffee, and on my way back out, just you know, crop dust everything. And no, that's you do it. In the tr- you do it in transit from like. Don't do it in the room. Do it like right as like as you leave the room, like. Immediately in the well, hallway. Well, there's just a bunch of desks there, then. Like, it goes from desk to break room. Like, there's no, There's no like, in-between? No. See, like, we have, like, our break room is, like, it's, like, a like a vending machine room. And, like, it's its own room. Then there's a hallway, and there's no, like, desks in-between. Like, we have a very closed-off facility kind of thing. Yeah. But anyways, Chris, he, it was, like, so, a, long, it was a long, squeaky one. But it happened, and it happens, it's happened since then. Like, he just keeps doing it? Yeah. Is it the same tone? Yeah, they sound mostly the same. Are you sure it's nothing, like, in his cubicle that's just, like, making that noise? Well, he sometimes it happens when he's standing up at his desk. It's not like... (laughs) And you know he's standing. Because it's a cubicle. We have standing desks. I don't understand why you're so surprised at this. You can move the desk up and down. Yeah, yeah, but like, like a there's a cubicle wall, right? No, it's open faced on our either side. Oh, okay. Yeah. See, I thought it was like, see, our like my I have like a like a room cubicle kind of thing. No. Okay, so you can. <laughs> that's even more <clears throat> weird because like you could look over at him and like, like, hey, dude, hey, can you could you not? But he's just. Oh, and I went. I went to pee today. It's just a totally different dude. But like, I went to pee today. Like, oh, well, I didn't go to pee. I was gonna go poop, poop, but both like I went to the first bathroom and the stalls, were, all the stalls were full. So I went to the other, the bathroom on the other side of the building, and all the stalls were full there. So I'm like, oh my god! So I was like, I'll just fake like I'm going to pee or something, and then like, uh, and then like, unawkwardly like leave. But then as soon as I'm up there, two guys get on either urinal beside me. I'm like, oh my god. And then I had to like exit that, and as soon as I turn around to wash my hands, one of the dudes at the urinals just like lets out the nastiest sounded part I've ever heard in my life. I'm like, you're literally like, we literally know it was you, you freaking, you freaking sicko. Yeah, but the, like in a bathroom, it's four walls of trust. No, it ain't. <laughs> it's not at ours either. <laughs> cause like, well, we're weird. Cause like. One of my friends will go in there and be like, hey, don't go to the bathroom. I just killed it. And we're like, hey, that's that's courtesy. Like, you don't want to be in there when somebody else is killing it, though. Yeah, and he, and he did it again. 
God. He did it like twice while I was washing my hands, and then he was just like, hoo, hoo, hoo. <laughs> I'm like, you're just a gross human being. How, like, like you're like, oh, okay, it's a bad chicken. I'm like, I want to stab you in the throat. Don't you <laughs> don't dare. Talk about, you don't comment on it. You just like, if you're going to do it like that, you just let it go. You just do it. Yeah. yeah. How, are you, how are you, like, how can somebody be that, like, un- I don't like it's unaware of just Uncultured. how gross you people are. Well, I mean, at least it's in our, the restroom. Like, that's what it's for. Yeah, yeah. He was at the urinal. He wasn't on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. It's not okay if you're, like, standing Fair around enough. with somebody. Also, they come in and stand right beside you. Were there no other, like, open there's only There's only three. Okay, I was about to say, because that's super weird if, like, there were multiple... In my defense, I shouldn't have taken the middle one. Yeah, okay. no, you should have picked the wall. That's bad. I didn't know anybody else was coming in there. I was I was uh, laboring under the person I could get in there and get out quickly. Well, the stalls were full. You should have been like, all right, I need to play this strategically. Urinals are always, always strategy. You want either... Ultimately, you want a free uh, urinal on each side of you. But... There's only three, you, so... But if you, can, if you don't have that option... You go to the wall urinal, like the one like closer to the wall. That way, you only have one guy beside you. It's yeah. I would uh, between between him and then that guy today. I was like, this is ridiculous. <laughs> A bunch of heathens in this building. You are correct. Well, like so, we have two. Like so, there's upstairs bathroom, downstairs bathroom. But like my bathroom that I use is like upstairs, and it's. It's got two stalls, three urinals, but only people really, like, most people use, like, the edge, like, uh, urinals. And the only, like, the only thing I don't like about the, one of the edge urinals is it's right in front of the door, pretty much. It's so, like, I'm peeing, and somebody opens the door wide open, I'm like, I'm right there, you know? Like, I don't like that. I feel insecure. <laughs> I feel like something bad is gonna happen. I'm always insecure. Yeah, that's true. Um... Also, how do you guys feel about people talking, like, in the bathroom, like, at all? Like, talking to you? I don't, I don't like, don't do that. Yeah, me no. either. No, like, there are people at my office, most notably my boss, will come in and strike up a conversation with me. And I'm like, no, you don't do, that's not okay. I've noticed a lot, like, while I'm on the toilet, I'll, like, hear other people, like, come in and have, like, real, like, conversations, like, oh, you know, some, sometimes it's just, like, not even necessarily small talk, it'll be like, oh, you know, like asking like serious questions about something that they're dealing with, like at their at like not like it's not like not like something like emotionally, like at work, just like a problem that they're having with like something they're doing, like a, with a case or something. And I'm yeah. like, can't you just go find them out at their desk? Or like, like this is I'd my be like, time. I'm trying, I'm trying to pee here. Or like, like what are you doing? Like if I'm I have, going to the and bathroom, and I have like really bad stage fright, so like I can't even. So I even have to go. To like the stall just to pee. Oh, so that I is need to ultimate, make... that is ultimate comfort. Now, if if, if nobody is there, now, if no one's there, I can do it. Yeah, but like, I don't know. I don't know that. I have to like like will myself to keep going if somebody comes in. <laughs> sorry, sorry, that's a serious thing. <laughs> I didn't mean to laugh. It's just funny because <laughs> the way you said it, you just gotta will yourself to keep going. No, like. I just don't like, like, if, if if my bird is in my hand or your bird is in your hand, you don't talk to me. Because either I... Only bird... eye contact. That's <laughs> no. all Kirby needs. No, I don't want it's... eye contact either. <laughs> I look at the wall. Like, I look directly at the wall. I don't want to know. If I'm in the bathroom, don't talk to me. That's my time. I'm not on... Like, I don't want to be talking about work. I don't want to talk about anything. I'm going in for a mission. You know what I mean? Yeah. There's even a guy that, like, tries to talk over the stalls. Like, you'll be in, in, like, you know, pooping. And, like, he'll come in and try to strike up a conversation. You're like, no, that's it's not okay. You know, because I'm going to have to break at some point okay. and just kind of grunt a little bit, you know? <clears throat> My, that like, is not okay. For me, <laughs> I, I guess I'm a little more lenient. Like, if it's just some random dude, don't talk to me. Like, that's not okay. If it's, like... A friend or something, I'm in the urinal, you know, you're good. I could care less if you talk to me. It doesn't matter. I'm, it doesn't take a lot of concentration for me. What well, does it take concentration for me, Lucas? It's just no, weird. No, 
no, like, it doesn't bother me. Like, I'm just peeing. Like, it's just pee. Like, I don't know. It doesn't bother me. But as soon as the stall door closes, that's no talking. <laughs> I'm trying to pretend you're not there. Like... <laughs> Like that's the that's the time where it's like okay I'm buckling down. Like if I'm washing my hands, it's fine. Like, but like if I'm not, yeah, that's okay. If that's you're washing fine. your hands, you're good. But like, and if the pants are unzipped, you don't talk. Like that's just not okay for guys to do that. Well, and the funny thing was the problem was like sometimes like when I put my pants on, I don't really pay attention to how my if my boxers get like twisted a little bit. So like I'm like there, I'm like sitting there at the urinal. It's like I'm like, what is wrong with my boxers? There's like no hole. What am I gonna do? <laughs> and ended up my boxers were like twisted halfway around my legs. Oh, that's always so, <clears throat> that's. So I was like, somebody's gonna come in here thinking I'm doing something nefarious. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I always I don't know about you, but like, do you guys just unzip and then put it through the hole? Yeah. See, like I don't do that. I just like you know you know whip it out. Like you unbutton it? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I just unzip. I just feel like it's easier, you know. I don't have to thread a needle or anything. Okay. I'm just like, and then also you also you decrease the chance that you will have urine on your clothes afterwards, because it's like not like, you know what I mean? Like, I think there's about the same, honestly. Yeah. I don't know. See, I feel like it's I I get I, I, in my experience. I feel like I've. It's less likely. It all comes down to your maintenance. Well, I mean, like it could be. It could be like you, Chris. Like if I'm having to like f- like find the hole to like in my boxers, like that's that. I might have to pee real bad. Like I just can't. I can't do that. Lucky for me, I didn't have to. I didn't even have to pee. I was just trying to fake out. <laughs> You're just trying to fake out. <laughs> this is how. This is how far-reaching my social anxiety goes. It's like I'm gonna be. I'm in a. What somebody would perceive as a completely normal situation is like DEFCON 5 for me. Well, here's the thing for you. Like, you, you went in and faked like you had to go to the bathroom. I will do that, but I won't pee. I'll just, like, grab, like, a paper towel or something. I'll blow my nose if, like, my spot's taken. I'll blow my nose. Blo- I should have blown my nose because I probably could have done that. At yeah, that exactly. Time. Had, it's more believable, I would have had a good too, reason to do it. Because, That's like, true. you can always fake blow your nose. <clears throat> Um, then I would probably reel and blow my nose anyway. Yeah, like it's, and also it's utility. It's utility as well. <coughs> the the times sorry, I got... that I get no, you're good. The times that I get social anxiety though is like, um, did you just huff that candle? I was just sniffing it to see if I could smell anything. Oh, okay. Um, the time I my get... nose is stopped up. You know this. Yeah. Um, I just I didn't expect you to reach over out of frame, get a candle, and just. Like, you know, sniff it. I didn't know you were at a wood, Woodwick Candles. I, screen, I have screen tearing going on right now. Oh, you're good. What? Okay, sorry. No, you're good. It's me out a little bit. So I have social anxiety because, like, when I go into a store and like I'm, I, like, I got a plan of I'm only getting one thing. But what if they don't have the one thing and then it, like you just walk out with nothing and you look like I don't very like suspicious. That. Yeah. Like I when in college when I did that when I would have to when I would do that and they did it about being there I would end up like just behind like a pop in the in the vending or in the coolers up near the registers so I had something. Yeah, see, my go-to is either trail mix or candy corn, and, or like I'll get like toilet paper or something because I could always use more toilet paper. I didn't know this was the thing. You just walk in, walk, like I just I, I don't yeah, wanna, I don't want to get questioned. If I go into a store and they don't have what I want, I'm just leaving. So like, uh, here's the thing. Like, if I ask and they say they don't have it, now I've made it known that I didn't get what I wanted. And then I can leave fine. But right. if I didn't ask and I found on my own that they didn't have what I needed, then it becomes a problem for me. Well, it, for my thing is like, you know, I'm not a super sketchy looking person. Is this, but, hold on, let me clear. Is this just at like a gas station or Grocery store, gas stations, or... big time. Gr- gas stations, because I don't want to just use the bathroom. Like I'll buy a pack of gum. No, so I'll use the bathroom in a gas station. I don't care. I, well, I feel bad. Like I feel like I'd like. No, I did feel bad that one time in Hazard when I. Oh man. <laughs> like <laughs> when we were in Austin, I didn't feel bad about it because like I got like well, I mean I got gas, so like it was fine. But like, had we like 
just pulled over somewhere. I'm like, I'm super out of town, and like, there's very few gas stations at that point of the road. So like, I was just gonna go and leave. But like, say like I go to a closed door, closed door only. You know, that's fine because like, you could just be like, oh, I was just shopping, like just looking around. Grocery stores stress me out, like Walmart. Because there, um, there's always people stealing stuff. You know what I mean? I don't want them to think that I stole something. So I just, I just buy something. Because I'm not gonna steal if I'm buying something. Because that gives me more of a chance of getting caught. Yeah, that's what. I, here's yeah, here's what I'm saying. Like when I'm in a gas station and I head straight for the bathroom, I feel like I've made it known this is the only reason I'm here. Yeah. So like I don't feel conscious about that. Now if I go into like a, like a Walmart. There's so many things going on there. I'm going to get lost in the shovel. Nobody's going to necessarily see me come in. But then again, I don't use bathrooms at Walmart because it's yeah. dangerous. Unless, I've only had to pee. Unless it's only dire circumstances. I can think of a couple times where I had – I just – it was the closest place. And I was like, all right, I'm going to a Walmart because it's right there and I can't hold it any longer. Well, see, gas station. So gas station, like if I have to use the bathroom, I go straight in, find the bathroom, use it, and then I'll just go buy a pack of gum and leave. See, I won't buy. I don't have. I don't feel like. I don't feel like I have to buy anything. You don't feel that like that. Um, what's it called? Like not necessity, but like obligation. Yeah, I don't feel an obligation at a gas station. Okay, that, I feel that, like that's. Fair, I feel like though. those are standard places for people that are traveling to stop and use the bathroom. What if it was I'm like not, a gas station that's not near an interstate? No, it's a gas station. So yours is okay. That's that's fair. I'll give that. See, if I was going to do that, I think it would be like, so there'd be a proximity from the interstate or something like the main road, like those I'd be fine going and using them leaving. But like, if I was going to like, like, let's say like the circle K in front of our high school, like if I was going to go to that one, I'd feel a little weird doing that, like doing it there. No, I, I don't know. It's just it's gas stations. I'm completely, I no no qualms. I'm good. Okay. So let's move on to a different topic. That's not bathrooms. Cause I, I feel really... I, like no, I, I'm I could talk, I could talk a lot more about it. I just like, well, I, I'm like, what? Because you said you didn't feel obligated at Walmart to buy something whenever you go in. No, I do. Like, if, if no, Chris. Oh, because isn't Chris the one that said he, whenever he went in somewhere, he felt like he had to buy something? No, that was well, like, me. Okay, like, let's say if I go to Walmart and I look for something and I don't find it on my yeah. own. Like, if I ask, okay, like my other thing was if I ask a person that works there. If they have this thing and they don't have it, and they tell me they don't have it, I don't. The obligation is no longer on me, because I have talked to somebody that works there. If somebody approaches me as I'm leaving. I'm going to say, "Your boy back here in electronics said it wasn't at the store or whatever." So it's like now, it's almost like what do you call it? like not testimony? What's it called when like you have like a like an out like I have a, a cop it's show? It's corroborated. Yeah. No, no, no. Have, well, it's, it's corroborated. Alibi. But like, alibi. That's the word. No, if I go to Walmart and on my own I discover they don't have the thing, then I feel obligated. Okay. Because it's like you're proving you didn't steal it. Like you have to have an alibi at all times, Lucas. And even though I'm walking out with nothing, it's not maybe necessarily that I'm stealing anything. It's that they might think I've stolen something. I'm like, I've... here's another problem. I don't. Also, I... I also don't like going to Walmart. And when you they make you pay for the stuff when you pay for the stuff at the back in the electronics department. I'd rather take it out front and pay it, pay for it, even though I've got a receipt in a bag with my stuff in it. That still makes me feel uncomfortable. See, at that point, I'm fine with it. But like, let's say I was gonna do more shopping. Why not just let me take my electronic thing that you know I'm gonna buy that you have on camera of me getting from the employee? Just let me walk it up up to the front. Let me finish my shopping, and then I'll pay and I'll leave. I don't want to have to make two transactions at the same Walmart. Here's here's what I don't here's what's weird about it. Like it depend. Oh my gosh, I just got dust all over my hand. Like, but if you, <coughs> I'm sorry. <coughs> if you get like um, any, if you have to ask somebody for it, they'll make they'll just default pay for it up there. If I go find like a DVD up there, I can just take it up to the back. I can take it back to the front. Nobody's gonna notice. Yeah. It just it just always depends on what they see i guess and it's really fresh i don't know i i just have the, the dumbest social no no it's completely because i used to be cool with like them like all right i'm gonna take this game that you got i'm gonna take it up front all you gotta do is go to like aisle whatever check out there and it's fine like that's what you used to do with ds game. Like, i remember this because I, I used to buy my own ds games and like i would say hey um i would like to check out up front and they said all right we're gonna take this to like whatever checkout line 
that's the one you need to go to. And I would just do that and I'd finish like whatever. I got to go find my mom and just wait till she was done shopping before I would go pay. Cause then, or else you're just a kid walking around with a video game. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So like for me, if I went to a Walmart and was looking for the new Spider-Man movie and they were sold out and I didn't ask anybody, I would just leave. I would have no problem. No. Yeah. But like, like you could, here's the thing. Some of the stuff that I go look for, I don't fully, I'm not fully aware of what I'm looking for. Like, it's just like, I think if I would, if there was something here that I would be interested in, I would buy it. And it's just, it's like, it's like they would think I'm casing the joint. Like, they're like, he's checking to see what our inventory is to see what he wants to steal next time he's here. I just get like, I run scenarios through my head. Okay. but I don't like, run that scenario but through like, my here's head the thing, because here's the I'm thing. not going to steal anything. <laughs> but I'm not going to steal anything either is the thing. It's just, it's, 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 it's a th- I don't know why, Lucas. It just happens. I got you. Um, but like, let's say I had a legit thing I was going to look for. They didn't have it. At that point, I think I'm okay. Like, because then I could be like, as I'm walking on the front, oh, you didn't have... The twenty yeah. foot extension here's, cord I want. Here's the thing: I'm not going to tell somebody that because that makes me look like I'm complaining. No, but what if they stop? Uh, what if they stop you and ask? Then I'll say why. Yeah, like, that's what I'm I, saying. I'm not going like, to. I'm not going to exit. I'm not going to just walk out the door by the green and say, "Hey, you guys don't have this." Yeah, this no, because that's dumb. <laughs> like well, I feel like I, there I, are some people that do that though. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, like it's like, like that when whiny I'm at a restaurant, old lady. And when I'm at a restaurant and somebody complains about like the food not being good i'm like well it's not the waitress's fault they didn't make the food yeah or like here's another thing if you go here okay this is a really big thing that grinds my gears if you go to a place and you order something a certain way like that's like if you say more than like only ketchup on my burger or whatever you say anything more than that do not expect them to get that right because that's too tough for a chef that's having to make, like, he's probably making five of the same dish at this one place, and he's doing it all the same. You know, don't complain. Just take off what you don't want. Or if, like, it's like a dish that's everything's mixed up, no, you eat everything that comes in that dish. You know what I mean? Unless Chris, there's Chris an is sneezing. with that. <laughs> you know, yeah, sorry, Chris is sneezing. He has a comment on this, but, but yeah, I guess, if there's a food allergy, that's legit, though. But don't be just a cantankerous, like, like you know what I mean, restaurant goer. Yeah, yeah. No, I order like my thought on this is everything on the menu is how the preparer usually does it and how the person that put the menu together intended for somebody to eat it. Yeah. So I don't make any changes to that. Like I order it from the menu. Now, if I order my steak medium. And they bring it to me. Anything? See, this is where my. But here, here, hold thing, on. How, how, as long as it's like medium rare and up, if I order it medium, I, I'm gonna eat it. If it's like any, if it's like rare, then I'll be like, okay, I can't eat this. This is too bad. Yeah, like, cause here's the thing: but, the line from medium rare to medium is too fine. Like, even if they take it back there, they're not gonna. It's gonna be too done at that point. You're just like, right. do I want my steak I mean, juicy or do I want it leather? Wait two more minutes and you're good <laughs> yeah um but, like steak's a different thing though because like steak like you cook a steak you know what i mean like yeah and don't get a don't if you're okay if you're listening to this podcast and you like a freaking well done ca- or a steak chris i know you like them well done that's just a bad way to eat steak the hey, darkest the dark five me i will the darkest you ever want a steak is is medium well you don't want it any darker because it's just dry hey. Chris, you do but you. Eat steak however what, you want it. People on the internet that are so uppity about steak, it just makes me so mad because they think they're they think they're so freaking smart because they like their steak the red. I don't. I just we've just okay. I've harped and harped about how like angry just pretentiousness makes me. Like it just it makes me matter quicker than like anything else. I'm not going to say anything about it because I don't want to cause, I don't like causing friction with that because I avoid, I avoid conflict, but it just, oh, just people thinking they're so cool. It just goes like, yes, I eat my steak 
rare, and anybody who doesn't eat their steak rare is a Neanderthal, and they should be thrown in jail. I'm like, shut up. You're like, no. you think you're so cool because you eat red steak. Wow. I wish I wish my identity was found in this one thing. Like, my whole <laughs> thing is I order my steak medium. Because, like, I've tried every other steak, and, like, if you get it any less done... It, it has, like, a metal taste to it because, like, it's just not... Like, to me, it does because it's still got a lot of the iron into it. And then if you get it any more done than that, <clears throat> it's just too dry. And you can't enjoy it because you're, like, having to choke it down with, like, steak sauce or, like, take a bunch of drinks of your water. Like, to me, that is the most efficient way to eat a steak. It's not because it's, like, I'm pretentious. I'm just, like, that steak no, is perfectly were, moist. No, 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 like... no. Like, like, I can sometimes come off pretentious because, like, you know, when we go, like... When when we take you to Wrigley, me and Lucas usually get beer. Hopefully, they're uh, like n- like n- nobody against. I don't care if you're against a- drinking alcohol, but we drink. Me and Lucas drink, not heavily, but we do. And like I like an amber ale or like a like a I go like, like a lighter ale. Yeah, but that's like a taste thing. Yeah, yeah, but like, you yeah. can't be so, for that though. And, and beer so drink- is. Well, no, no, no. Hold on, I'm not done. But like beer drinking, like that, like the steak thing. People aren't the beer are making fun of like other other people yeah. that drink beer. The steak thing sometimes run into people just like completely disregarding the any like it's almost a run. It runs into like if you have any opinion on anything, I don't accept your opinion if if you eat like well done steak. Like I don't if you it's like if your opinion if you eat well done steak, I don't trust you on anything because if I can't trust you eat your steak right, then it's like come on, yeah. yeah. I mean, no, I could. <laughs> uh, I taste is that, subjective. Too. So, like, I was watching a video the other day, uh, just about different types of like whiskey and bourbon and all that kind of stuff. And it was like, you need to know what the best way to drink whiskey is, however you like it. <laughs> He's <laughs> like, I don't care. Like, you can name off all this stuff, but taste is subjective. Something that works for me may not work for you so it's like just whatever you want to do with it as long as you enjoy it you're good i can't stand yeah. people how, like mm, steak right. and yeah beer and i mean pretty much everything is as long as you're not like as long as you enjoy it and you don't put anybody else down for not enjoying what you enjoy then go for it like i don't care my whole thing like so like whiskey so beer drinkers were all different because, like, some people like IPAs. Lucas likes a very dark beer. I like, like, the medium range. Everybody's fine with that because, we, like we said, taste is subjective. But when you get to, like, whiskey and, like, in bourbon and, and, like, and brandy drinkers, quickly. like, yeah, it's like, it's like, there's a, f- like, everybody that drinks beer is not pretentious. And then you have these There whiskey. are some. There are some, <laughs> yes. There are some beer snobs that, like, will not drink a cheap beer. Me and I'll drink, I'll, I'll drink, I'll drink PBR. I don't care. I like PBR. I'm not going to say it's garbage. I, if I could have a country boy shotgun wedding, I'm going to prefer that over a PBR. But like, if I get, if I get whiskey, I'm going to get Jameson Irish whiskey. I'm putting it on the rocks. Somebody stopped me and goes, you're ruining that whiskey. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I want it to last longer. If the ice is going to melt, it's going to give me a little bit more liquid. Might take the edge off to where I don't get, like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm thinking about, like, you know, I just, I kind of want it cold. Don't tell me how to drink my whiskey because it gets me pissed off. (laughs) Okay, so, yeah, and along these lines, when we went, the last, I don't remember, it wasn't necessarily the last time I was at the Wrigley, but I remember a time where where we were there and somebody with us had a, had bourbon in a glass. Oh no, I remember this gla- time. Yeah. And the glass was stunted on one side. And I asked him <laughs> why it was like that. And he said, "So I can get a better smell of it." And I was like, "That's the most pretentious thing I've ever heard." If I if I want to drink something, I don't care what it smells like. I, mean, I will say glasses do have an effect on the taste. Yeah. The different shapes why? and everything. Why is that? Um, I don't know. It just I does. I don't know why. But there's a but beer that me and I Lucas have had you. that if you drink it from a chalice, it tastes like orange juice. But if you drink it from a pint glass, it tastes like chocolate milk. And I Wait, swear. Wait, yo, 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 chill. No, I, sw- I swear. I swear it does. I didn't believe Lucas. He went to like a beer tasting class when we were in college. I didn't believe him. Like, there's no way. Yeah. There's nothing. There's. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> No, yeah, it wasn't to be. Like, it, it, it was just something to do. Well, like, it was a, it was called beer school. It was uh, 
they took they brought out like five different Belgian beers and explained like what went into making each one and why it tasted like this, why it was named this. Oh, well, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah and it, it was, was educational. Really, really cool. It was like something to and do. And then they they gave you like a little test of it, and then one of them they were like, "Try it in this glass," and you tried it, and it tasted like oranges. Like it, it was a chocolate orange beer. That's weird. Yeah, it was really weird, but it just tasted super orangey and fruity. And then they put it in a different glass, and it straight up just tasted like chocolate milk. Like it was like super thick and foamy, and it was weird. And like what same, I think it same is, one, same bottle. What I th- like, so like we're not gonna do this on the podcast because I can't show people the scientific diagrams that I have in my head through a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but like I think it's all about like how the 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 liquid sets because if it's like more closed at the top, you're only getting like one flavor at a time. But if you let it like flourish, like so, like like a like a like a chalice has like a flare at the top you're going to be able to get, like, more flavors because there's more surface area for it to hit you. You know what I mean? Sure. <laughs> but, like, we're not... We're, okay, so I, I, I don't want to come off as pretentious, though, because, like, me and Lucas aren't pretentious when it comes to beer because we'll drink any freaking beer, except I won't drink IPAs. Lucas probably won't either. IPAs? Yeah, I like IPAs. <laughs> I don't. I hate IPAs. I, they just taste too bitter to me. But, like, it's not because, like, I'm like, oh, that's beneath me. It's, oh, I don't like the taste of that, so I'm probably not going to drink it. You know what I mean? Yeah, I don't think something's beneath. Yeah, be, 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 all right, whoa, this is beneath me. Whoa. Yeah, no, like nothing's like I, nothing's beneath me. I just that's like, what I'm saying. Like, yeah, yeah I know, I know. I can't. This is, mm, this is beneath me. Okay. If it tastes good, I'm gonna eat it. Like, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> but where were we going with this? I don't know. We were just, just good. So good. yeah, it's good stuff. I just like <laughs> I, I I don't know what to talk about anymore on this subject. Speaking of beer, how good was Spider Man into the Spider Verse? <laughs> <laughs> how good was Into the Spider Verse, Chris? I don't I don't know. I can't reference it to beer. <laughs> Lucas is doing a segue. Yeah, oh. I was doing a classic Kirby seg- segue. <laughs> no, mine do better than that, you jerk. I know. I well, tried well, here's to what kill- no, 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 no. We're gonna talk about. Say. We're gonna talk about this. As I try to do elegant segues, and then you guys don't pick up on any of the cues, and then I have to make this super long stretch to make it from point A to point B, and I, I, I do not want to get persecuted for it. I tried to set you up for one earlier, and it just went. Right on by. What was it? Well, okay, what was it? Whenever I go to Walmart to buy the new Spider-Man movie and they don't oh, that have was pretty it, good, I though. just walk out. <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, see here, I would do this. And I was like, no! <laughs> that I didn't get it pain. <laughs> I thought you just said it because that was just something you were, we were talking about earlier and you just said this is the first movie I could think of for this ref- for this example. Nope. <laughs> I did. My bad. But like, I'm super. I'm like very like. I'll ask you questions about a certain thing. You just like you just like you just, like you did. They just phase past you. Yours was too subtle. But anyways, so the next topic. This was actually the plan topic, but it actually works good because I think we can close out the show with it. But um, we went to watch. Well, all at different times. Well, me and Chris went at the same time, but we went and watched into the Spider Man into the Spider Verse. Um, which is the new animated Spider-Man movie with, um, uh, I, I know the big, like Chris Pines in it, Nick Miller's in, or not Nick, no, that's his actual name. Yeah. Nick Miller. Yeah. yeah. I could, I thought that's his, his girl name from new girl, <laughs> but like that's actually his name. Yeah, his name is Jake Johnson. Yeah. Jake Johnson. Oh yeah. Oh, it is Nick Miller. <laughs> no, that's from what new I girl. thought it was. And then you're like, no, yeah, Nick Miller. I'm like, oh, so that's his real name. No. So Jake Johnson, Chris Pine. Um, who played uh, the kid? Shamik Moore. Shamik Moore. Shamik Moore. Shamik. 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 What's the, he, what else is he in? Uh, Shalom Fantastic from the Get Down is the only thing I know him from. He was in Dope, wasn't he? Oh, he was in Dope. Yeah. I oh, think so. okay. I have seen Dope. Okay, I know. I know what movie that. I know. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, then who played? Didn't Haley I, Steinfeld was Gwen Stacy. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, uh, Nicholas Cage. Nicholas Cage is and, Spider-Man um, Noir. And then John Mulaney was Spider Pig. 
or yeah. Peter Porker. I don't know Spider-Ham. who. Spider- Some Japanese lady. Yeah, I don't remember who played anime Spider Man. Who played the uncle? Was that a big uh, name? Uh, Herschel Ali. What's he from? Is he going to be in something? He's in the new, he's in the new season of True Detective. Okay, okay. That's gives. He's us also something. Remy Danton from House of Cards. He was in Moonlight. Yeah, so we got like the the cast is pretty solid though, you know. And the dad was one of the dudes from Atlanta. Okay, yeah. yeah. So like, I think it had a solid. I think it had a really solid, um, like a solid cast. Um, how do you guys think? How did you guys think about the animation? Because like some people just as soon as you say animated movie, they're like, no, that's not a good movie. Do you guys feel like the animation was had good taste? I mean, yeah. You think it suited the genre? Oh, yeah, it looked really, really good. Yeah. I, I like. I remember last time we were talking about Aquaman. Lucas said like it looked like a comic book, and like some people like yeah. lose that when you just think, oh, it's an animated movie. Of course, it's gonna look like a comic book, but like it had the etching. It even had like the automatopoeia kind of spelled out at some points. I thought it was really good. Like some of the some of the like the scene changes were almost like comic book panels. I really yeah. like that because the color differences were so like different. I really enjoyed it. Um, how did you guys like? So, what was your all's favorite part? I guess I'm gonna quit talking. And let you guys talk. Part. Uh, I mean, I don't really know if I really had one. I felt like it. It was pretty, it was so solid all the way through. I mean, like, yeah. I mean, I ha- I do have a favorite part. It's kind of spoiler territory. Yeah, and like, uh, we're I think we're past our spoiler grace period. I mean, yeah, it's been yeah, it's over been a while yeah, since yeah. I've watched it. So we're good, it, but, like, uh, not yet, but pretty close. But uh, it's whenever uh, at the end of the movie, whenever he finally takes the leap of faith and he jumps off the building. And then all the glass pulls off, and then it like shows him in slow motion diving down through the skyscrapers and everything. Mm-hmm. It's actually the background on my phone right now. That's it's actually like a huge video. Like, yeah. It was really cool. It had a lot, Chris said this as we were walking out of the movies, and I don't know if he remembers it because Chris had a headache when we went into the movie, and it just kind of stayed there. But um, he said there was a lot of good still like stills in the movie, like that you could like you know take a picture yeah. and it would look amazing. Do you remember saying that, Chris? No, I have no idea. I don't remember that at all. And like I, that's like that's one of them. Um, another one that I thought was cool was like the different intros of all the different Spider Men. I thought those were cool stills. Um, the point uh, at the not the end, no, yeah, at the end where he hugs his dad. That was a cool still. Like there's a lot of cool stuff like that. I thought it, I thought it played to its genre really well. Um, because, like, if you're reading a comic book, you're going to have a lot of stills because they're all stills because they're all com- like they're all pages. And I thought they kept that into, like, it appeased kids because it was, you know, super fun animated movie. But also appeased your adults that were going to go see it because those were the comic book lovers. So it appeased them, I thought, with, with like, the style and stuff. And then also appeased the adults because it had a solid story and a solid cast. And there wasn't anything super dumb in it for an And the jokes movie. landed. Dude, yes, yeah. the jokes landed. I thought that whenever I saw Spider-Ham, I was really worried because I was like, he's just going to be, like, so far outside of the... Because the, like, Miles Morales and that whole storyline was very dark. Yeah. Yeah. And then I saw Spider Ham, and he walked up with a wet hand. He was like, "Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Peter Porker. My hands are wet. I just washed my hands. That's the only reason why." And I was like, "Oh crap! This is. It's just going to be way out of place." But it somehow it fit perfectly with the scenes that he did go over the top. But, um, yeah, like, I think off the top of my head, there were only like three points where I'm like. Peter Porker wanted to be the hit joke in that scene. And like the one was with the handshake with like, my hands are wet. You know, the other one was when they're hiding from his roommate on the ceiling. He's like, you know, it'd be really weird if animals talked in this universe. You know what I mean? Like two yeah. animals talk in your universe. I don't want to freak him out. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, and it was subtle, but that like, that's the joke that they want to hit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I thought the I thought the I I loved the idea of the parallel universe though. They did that really well. 
like why Kingpin wanted like Kingpin wasn't just bad to be bad. He had a reason for wanting to bring like the multiverse together. You know what I mean? Because like that's yeah. one of your big like hates on Marvel movies. Yeah, yeah. It's just the bad guy is there to. He's just bad. Like I, there's no reason for it, but uh, which they've gotten better. A lot yeah, better. Yeah, at least Thanos has a reason. Yeah. Yeah, it's the virus effect. You gotta kill the virus. The human you know, like, like human life is the virus because it's killing everything else. That was his whole thing. Did you get that? No. He wanted to make the snap because everybody was killing the environment. In yeah, like I need to watch Ant Man probably to get caught up. Yeah, I've not watched Ant Man two either. Uh, I haven't either. Um, I don't think I will. <laughs> I, am, I mean, I am before Endgame just because like it's got things to do with Endgame. The first one was ask, so bad. What'd you say, Chris? No, I watched. I haven't watched Bird day. Box yet. It's I haven't watched Bird lame. Box either. It's so lame. It's, I didn't like it. Okay, it I wasn't even scary. It. Yeah, I haven't watched it because I saw it and I was like, "Oh, they took the quiet place." And made it to where they can't see. Yeah, we talked about that last week. Like, it's like they thought it was almost a ripoff. Yeah, but, I mean, with that being said, I'm sure something came before The Quiet Place. I just also... wanted I just wanted to be able to get the memes. That's really the only reason I did it. Yeah. I wanted to understand all the memes on Twitter. So I was like, all right, I guess I want to watch this now. What about, like, Cause... we should talk about that next week. Let's talk about Bird Box next week. Oh, not. Well, like, kind of do like what we were doing this episode, like where we like just talk, and then like if we run out of stuff to talk about, then we run into like we talk about the movie. Okay, because I was like, I really don't. Well, like, yeah, because like, it's not a great movie. Is no, like it's I'm not. here, like I've I've heard so many people say it's not that good. I didn't get it. Like it was over my head or something. Like, no, over their head. No, like I don't like I like I think they thought there was supposed to be more behind it, and there wasn't. So they're like, oh, I just oh. didn't understand the movie. Because I think my mom said that. She's like, I think it was just over my head. And I'm like, what do you, you're an intelligent person. I know you ask some dumb questions when we do go see movies, but like, you're usually good on plot, you know? Plot right. Yeah. Um, but also, let's talk about the movie we're talking about this week. What else did you guys like about Spider-Verse? Soundtrack. What? Soundtrack was awesome. Like, I actually, like when I stream, I listen to music between games I listened all the way through this soundtrack and loved every song. Like, there wasn't a song that I was like, I'm not a big fan of that song. I think the songs themselves could be great alone, but you put them all together. Some of them are. Yeah, some of them are. Like, but you put them together in this movie, they were just fire. Uh, I mean, I mean... I'm, I'm, I'm kind of mad that I had like a really big headache when I watched it because I know I would have enjoyed it more if I was at full, if I was at 100%. Yeah, and I also would have enjoyed it more had we been in a bigger, like, not that we were in like one of the, the movie theater we have has big theaters and small theaters. We were in one of the small theaters and there was a kid right behind me and Chris that wouldn't shut hey. up. Dude, did he? Didn't he fall into the floor at one point? Yeah, he fell into the floor like three times, and his mom and dad was like, "Ha ha ha, it's so cute." I'm like, "I'm like, how is your kid so dumb to fall out of his chair at the movie theater?" Like, I'm sorry. And I'm like, "Your kid's making noise, like not just like whispers of like, hey mom, what's going on?'" It's like ah, he's like repeating what the person on screen said. I'm like, "I will slap a and child." I love, and I love how funny kids think when something big happens. They go, "Uh oh!" I'm like, "Oh wow, real you got a real comedian on your hands here." Yeah. <laughs> Wow, something happened. It's uh oh time. Ha ha. The next John Belushi right here. And like, I didn't think it was going to be the kid behind us. I thought it was going to be one of the kids in front of us. Because one of the kids in front of us was like talking really loud in like the previews and stuff. This is how how to train your dragon four. I'm like, it's three, but whatever. Close enough. Yeah, like, like, it was was funny because he was. And I've never even seen him, and I knew that. I've seen him. (laughs) It might, I yeah, it's it's three. I was I was really hoping that it would have been the name of it would have been three, and then he would have looked like a complete idiot right there. But it just had its own title, and I was like, oh, yeah. Well, I think there was like a Netflix 
show. Yeah, there for was how a Netflix to train show. Your dragon. I don't uh, know how well, many seasons, but there was. I don't know. But also, uh, I'm not gonna go watch it. Yeah. Okay. I'm also disappointed that the Lego Movie Two does not look good. I'm, yeah. I, I, I don't know that. Like, I am so against the first Lego Movie because I had to watch it four times on a plane on the way back from Turkey. Turn it off, Tyler. No, like, it was change? like it was, or no, it was from Bangladesh to Turkey. So like, it was just on. Like I couldn't you know, do anything. Turn those monitors. No, 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 no. We don't. It wasn't one of the ones that was on the back of your seat. It was like up, like like you were on a charter bus, and they were like, like three rows in front of you, just hanging down. Hey, did you not have like a book or something? I couldn't. Like it, the sound was coming through the TVs. Yeah, like he couldn't block it. I've been in that situation, but it was with, you know, whenever it comes down Chris, to it. it was on a plane from Bangladesh. Yeah. I watched it on the fly myself. Yeah, this might be the reason why I don't like Matthew McConaughey. What movie did you watch multiple times? Sahara on a flight. Sahara's great. But do you like Steve Zanzi still? I don't even know who that is. That's the supporting yeah, character. He's a big UK fan. Steve, what's his last name? Zahn. Z-A-H-N. Steve Zahn. Honestly, I have no idea what else he's been in. He was in Daddy Daycare. Oh, great. Yeah. Uh, he was in War of the Planet of the Apes, yeah. which I haven't seen. The Perfect Getaway, which I haven't seen. Rescue Dawn, which I haven't seen. Sahara, which I've watched on a plane. Uh, I don't think I've seen anything else he's been in. <laughs> he's been in a bunch of stuff. Uh, he I... has, but just nothing that I would watch. Hold on. You guys, Van, I want to see what Steve's... Because I know I've seen him in more than just Sahara and Baby. He hasn't or... been in a whole lot. He was in a uh, Baby Driver. Not Baby Driver. I was going to say Baby Daycare, but I meant Daddy Daycare. I mean, he's been in a lot of stuff, but just nothing that I've seen. Um, I wonder if he's like voiced a lot of stuff. Oh, he's in. I've seen National Security. Yeah, yeah. Um. Huh. I've all. I've only. Se- I've seen very few of his. Oh, he's in Dallas Buyers Club. Okay, that was one of the big ones. And you've got mail. I've seen that. He was a voice in Chicken Little. I've seen that. Um, Tyler, you're looking at Matthew McConaughey. No, I was looking at Steve Zahn. I don't think he was in Dallas Buyers Club. That was a Matthew McConaughey movie. I'm under he, the movies in. and TV shows of Steve Z- Z- Zahn. Is it Zahn or Zahn? Zahn. And he's Zahn. also in Banditas, Zahn. which I've seen. It's got Salma Hayek and Penelope Cruz. That was really good. Oh, it. hello there. That sounds like something I need to watch. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you might like one of the scenes, Chris. Um, he's in Comanche Moon. I've seen that. Um, he was in Stuart Little. Oh my gosh, he's actually been in a bunch of stuff. He was a dad in Stuart Little. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. He was in Doctor Doolittle too. Seen that? I, okay, I've okay. Yeah, I've seen a lot more things than I thought. I I'm not gonna just list off all the movies because that's not gonna be good content. Um, but yeah, so he's like he's a like he's not like small like you know what I mean? Yeah, he's a big UK fan. He lives in Georgetown. Yeah, he was the yeah. Y at one of the games we went to. I think he was the Y in the game that we went to that we ate um, at Loudon Square Buffet with Charlie. And I Justin. don't remember anything from that game. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that I ate a crap ton of food and then had to go stand in the eruption zone. Yeah, I think that was a Missouri game. It w- Sounds like it was more than just one eruption. Yeah. <laughs> it was also more than one type of Missouri. <laughs> Who got it. Because it was Missouri basketball and then it was misery because we were standing with full stomachs. Yikes, that was... That was stretch. good. That, that was, was good. I don't know what you're talking. That was good. I don't know. Oh, you guys are the worst. I thought that was. I thought that was clever. Did you all know that his uncle was Prowler? Yeah. Was Prowler. No, I had no idea. I didn't uh, up until the point that they revealed it. Yeah, really? Okay. Well, like okay. I kind of had some kind of suspicion, I but I out. didn't know. Here's when I figured it out. As soon as he went to his uncle's house and he wasn't there, I was like, his uncle's the prowler. Or no, so I was like, okay, his uncle's got to be the prowler. Because why would they have this have happen here? Yeah. Gotcha. Like, it was so, very well done for, like, oh, a yeah, reveal. Oh, yeah, it was still cool, but... <coughs> it was almost as good as when in Spider-Man Homecoming... Or not Homecoming. What was the no, first? it was not. Yeah, Homecoming. 
Yeah, that was the first yeah. Spider-Man movie with Tom Holland. It was yeah. almost as good as the reveal with um, crap. Way better. It was real way better. I about pooped my pants when I had that happened. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that goes back to our first topics. But like, no, it was, was really like, good. That was really well done for the for like the movie it was. Also, side note from that move from the like Spider-Man: Homecoming, does that mean that Childish Gambino is the Prowler? Yeah, it kind of does. Well, I mean, he could be an uncle on his mother's side. No, that's true. Well, he's Aaron Davis. That's who he plays in oh. Spider-Man: Homecoming. Well, then never mind. <laughs> <laughs> so it is. Uh, when the movie first started, I thought it might have been him voicing it. I didn't know. Oh, that would have been cool. Oh, yeah. I would have liked that. That would have been really. Donald Glover's good. If you put him in anything, he's good. Yeah. We've said that we've had a whole episode about that. Yeah. I've been watching Community and I just started Atlanta. So, like, I'm. I want to watch Atlanta with him. I think that'll, like. Yeah. It's real weird. Is it, like, a, is it a funny show? It yeah. It's like, have you ever watched Twin Peaks? No. Like, the way he described it was Twin Peaks for black people. <laughs> Uh, that's pretty that's pretty on the nose yeah and like he's pretty accurate <laughs> like, he, yeah like, like for instance there was a scene where like it led up to this whole thing like uh his ex girl his ex girlfriend slash roommate slash baby mama slash whatever's going on there uh, it's too many things to actually reel in. <laughs> yeah, because like they're not together because she's still dating people, but he lives with her whenever he doesn't have anywhere else to stay. But he's technically homeless, and he also has a daughter. It also sounds like black <laughs> people shameless. No, it's nothing like shameless. No, 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 no. I don't know. It's because that's what you basically described the main, the dad, and shameless with that. <laughs> No, no, you're not understanding that connection because I've watched the first season of Shameless and it's nothing like Shameless. Like not I've at all. I've watched multiple seasons of Shameless. I know. Because you've never watched any of you've Atlanta. You've never watched Atlanta. I promise you, it's the not the The way you the described same. that sounded exactly like... Well, um, I didn't describe it right then if that's what you think of. It's nothing like Shameless. All right. It's... It's, it's nothing like Shameless. <laughs> okay. Is it on Netflix? No. Dang. No, I'm watching it on Hulu. Okay. I need to set up a Hulu account then. Because also yeah. Brooklyn Nine-Nine's all on Hulu. I want to watch that. I'm, I finished season five of it a couple, like a month ago. I started then... a new show on Netflix today. I'm not through the first episode, but I started it today. It's uh, the sex education show. Why? I don't know. It was on the front page. <laughs> what? what? Okay. All right. <laughs> I, it, it reminds me of like a serious version of Inbetweeners, Lucas. Okay. <clears throat> and it's not. I don't like, know how a serious version of Inbetweeners would work. <laughs> I, I mean, it, it's kind of stereotypical because it's like it's it's British. It's all British people. But like. I feel like a lot, like, you know how the in-betweeners are trying to get out, get out of like being like just the weirdos. Yeah. The two main characters in sex and sex education are trying to get out of being weirdos. I gotcha. So like, like I said, I'm not through the first episode, but I'm pretty, like, I'm pretty far into it. Like I, I, I it feels like serious in-betweeners. Okay. So by saying that you're saying it's a dry British comedy about high school kids. It's a British sh- a drama about high school kids. Oh, it's a drama. Okay. Well, like it's not like serious. It's not like 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 a soap oh. opera, but like it's like got some. Se- there's funny parts to it, but there's also like you know it's it's about serious stuff, kind of. Gotcha. Or like what high schoolers see as serious stuff. But yeah, it's not bad so far. the The opening scene, you're like, wait, what? Cause like, this is like, it starts out pretty like throwing in your face, but you know, it's, it's not like once you get past that, it's not bad. 
Alrighty then. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> I guess I guess we'll call it like it for this episode because we're like at fifty four minutes. Hold on, real quick. Final like thoughts of uh, Spider Verse. I guess like. Oh yeah, because we've not really talked yeah. much about it. Yeah. Um, I mean, we said I think we all really enjoyed it. Yeah. But, like. Yeah, I definitely liked it more than I liked Aquaman. That's for sure. <laughs> I think yeah, I, I did too. Yeah, I think I did as well. But I also, I also, I really enjoyed Aquaman too. Um, but like, I think, I think Spider Verse was really good. It was better than I thought it was going to be, and it was like, I, it also was hyped up for me too. So like, if that tells you anything, like, I, it got a lot of hype, and then it met that hype, and even exceeded the hype. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. Yeah. So for me. I think it was the best superhero movie of 2018. Well, for me. Yeah. Well, tw- I watched That's it in fair. 2019. So. Well, it came out in 2018. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because. That's fair. Yeah. Let me think. I liked it better I liked than Avengers. Easily. Sure. Yeah, I did too. Did Did Thor Ragnarok come out 2018? 2017. 2017. Then yeah, yeah it's best. Yeah. Thor Ragnarok was the it's the only other one that was up there and uh i still think i i don't know i think i'm gonna actually go try to watch spider-man again tomorrow (laughs) spider-man was really good though yeah if it's still out i don't know did it it came out no it didn't come out it came out 2017 too right he's talking about this one uh i thought you about the first but like the spider-man homecoming no no about this one spider-man homecoming was like middle of the road outside of that one scene whenever uh michael about, keaton I, opens I, up I the door i lost it i lost <laughs> it man. i was see i really liked <laughs> i really liked spider-man homecoming i really enjoyed it by the way spider-man into the spider-verse is really good like i don't you don't have to know anything prior you just got to take it for what it is and go with it and yeah. it's really good i actually think it would probably be better if you didn't know anything prior to it yeah because there are some really good reveals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there were really good reveals, and then there were also like, you think you know Spider-Man stuff because you've read the comics, but like they do their own story, and I think that's really good. Like, okay. it's good there is original stories out there for stuff, and I, I really liked this original story. Okay, so any closing thoughts about anything we've talked about tonight? Anything's on the table. Uh-huh. No. Okay. Um, all right, we're going to close out this episode. Guys, thank you so much for listening to Better Than Static. Um, we we very much enjoyed talking on this episode. Hopefully you enjoyed it as well. Please go check us out on all of our social medias. We have a <coughs> Facebook page. Go like that. Facebook.com slash BT Static. We have a Twitter at BT Static. Go interact with that stuff. We enjoy it. We post our, all our episodes there, so if you... You like want to have alerts of when those get posted. We post them with funny pictures of thumbnails that I make. Um, also, go check us out on all the multiple different podcast uh, casting apps. We're on iTunes, Podbean. Um, we're on Stitcher. We're not on Spotify yet. I'm trying. They're tough. They're tough cookies at Spotify. So go help us out so we can make it there. Or you can check us directly on our website, be, uh, betterthanstatic.pod. Or no, it's betterthanstatic.podbean.com. Um, and then you can email us btstatic.pod at gmail.com. Yeah. Go do all those things. Um, like subscribe, share, go watch us on YouTube, whatever you want to do. Hopefully this episode has been better than static. We will catch you guys next time. Yeah. Yeah. Have you ever been reading through a stack of comics and thought, hey, maybe I should see what the Arkham Asylum game is all about, or been playing Marvel vs. Capcom, and felt like you were at a real disadvantage because you didn't know who half the characters were? Well, Play Comics is the show for you. I'm Chris, and each episode, I take a look at video games based on comic book properties and how well they stick to that source material. So, whether you know the comics and want to actually learn how these games work, or know the games and want to know what the hell is going on, 
Go check out Play Comics at playcomics.com, the Brain Trust Bros Network, or wherever you find your favorite podcasts.